These are my reasons for affirming that love is the eldest and noblest and mightiest of the gods and chiefest author and giver of virtue in life and of happiness after death. This, or something like this, was the speech of Phaedrus. As you can see, Plato lays it out pretty clearly. The god love, Eros, Cupid, is the motivating factor behind all that is good in the world. People who have aspirations, who seek to get things done, whether it's battles, whether it's building a, a society, the motivating factor behind it is usually love. It's usually the caring for the people that you're close to. It's usually keeping family safe or impressing a lover at a young age, protecting your children. We see this throughout ancient myths. Jason in the Argonautica is saved by Medea's grace. She, he is also anointed by Medea. But none of this would have happened have it not for Eros getting involved and in making Medea fall in love with Jason. Jason would have not have completed his journey. The same goes for Odysseus in the Odyssey. Would Odysseus be successful in his journey if it wasn't for Athena saving him time after time? And the reason behind it was Eros making Athena fall in love with Odysseus. So once again, love being the motivating factor, being the core, the driving factor behind the success in these epics. In the Dionysica, Eros drives Dionysus mad for Aura with delicious wound of his arrow. And the god roamed over the hills, scourged with the greatest fire. In the story of Eros and Psyche, which is within the golden ass of Apelius, the story tells a quest for love between Eros and Psyche. Aphrodite, jealous of the beauty of the mortal princess, Eros falls in love with Psyche and spirits her away to his home. After a visit from Psyche's jealous sisters, they cause Psyche to betray love. After wandering for a long time, Psyche runs into Aphrodite and asks for help and she gives him a series of difficult tasks. After successfully completing them, Aphrodite relents and Psyche becomes immortal to live alongside her husband Eros. The point of this is the motivating factor for love and Psyche, which is the incarnate god of the human soul, is the bond of love and marriage. The sort of glue that holds together all purpose in all things is love. Eros is not just famous in Greek mythology or Roman mythology as, as Cupid. Christianity has a lot to owe to Eros. Let me explain why. Mark 28 through 34. When one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And well said, teacher, the man replied, you are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. John 15, 9 through 17, 
states as follows, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you my friends. For everything I learned from the Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, my Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. And in this verse in particular, he mentions that greater love has no other than this to lay down one's life for his friends. Similar to what we heard in Plato's Symposium, love being the motivating factor for people to do good deeds. Why this is the greatest commandment? Because other good deeds, other commandments become fulfilled just through this one commandment, which is why Eros is the firstborn in a pagan sense. Jesus was not the first Jew to come up with sayings like this. Hillel the Elder, a generation before Jesus, says that what is hateful to you, do not do to your fellow. This is the whole Torah. The rest is commentary. The last thing I want to leave you with is from the Gnostic Nag Hammadi scriptures. It's a text known as On the Origin of the World. It's quite long, so I'm not going to read the whole thing. But there is a passage about Eros, and it says, Out of his first blood, Eros appeared, being androgynous. His masculine nature is humorous, because he is fire from the light. His feminine nature is that of a soul of blood, and is derived from the substance of forethought. He is very handsome in his beauty having more loveliness than all the creatures of chaos. Then, when all the gods and their angels saw Eros, they became enamored of him. But when he appeared among all of them, he made them inflamed, just as many lamps are kindled from a single lamp, and the light shines, but the lamp is not diminished. So also Eros was scattered in all the creatures of chaos, but was not diminished, just as Eros appeared out of the midpoint between light and darkness, and in the midst of the angels and people the intercourse of Eros was consummated. So too the first sensual pleasure sprouted upon the earth. The woman followed the earth, and marriage followed the woman, and reproduction followed marriage, and death followed reproduction. After Eros, grapevines sprouted up from the blood that was shed upon the earth. Therefore, those who drink the vine acquire the desire for intercourse. After the grapevine, a fig tree and a pomegranate tree sprouted up from the earth. Together, the rest of the trees according to their kind, their seed deriving from the seed of the authorities and their angels. This is a Gnostic version of the same thing that Hesiod and Phaedrus are getting at. It's also very relatable to what Jesus is getting at in his parables. If you do the commandment of love, everything else will follow. You don't need to worry about any other commandments because the commandment of love covers all the other commandments. Eros being the firstborn, that no other deity can come into existence without love because there is no purpose for them to be brought forth. But in this Gnostic text, the first blood was Eros appeared, and after Eros, the grapevine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, meaning in a Gnostic sense, instead of there being these gods, we have these different types of vines coming forth from the light of Gnosis, and Eros is the first one.
if love is the only commandment you follow, all the other commandments will be fulfilled. All these things that we do, we fight, we build armies, we protect our cities, we protect our children, we protect our, our loved ones. We try to do things driven by love. All these characters and all these myths, Dionysus, Aphrodite, Medea, Athena, they are the saviors in all of these myths because they're driven by love, which is why love is the mightiest of all the gods.